All right. Welcome to our webinar today, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. We really appreciate it. I know everyone's super busy, but these we feel are really important to kind of help each other out and, and make our PE programs a little bit better. Uh, today, we are honored to have our host, Daryl Salmi. He is a teacher in Minnesota. Uh, he's been teaching for about 27 years, and he's one of the good ones. He really, really cares about his kids, about constantly improving his PE program. And he's been with Heart Zones for, for how long now, Daryl? About seven years? Yeah, about seven years, Will. Yeah, and he, he's incredible. He really gives us good feedback on how to make everything better for everyone else, too. We really appreciate it. And we're honored to have teachers like that. You know, they, that, that helps make everything a little bit better in schools and, and then in the world, I feel like. So um, today, Daryl's going to be talking about how he uses Heart Zones and, and the best ways to implement that. And uh, if you have any questions, we really encourage it. Please feel free to chime in anytime uh, using the comment section or the raise hand feature. And we'll get to you as soon as possible. Uh, and of course, we'll have time at the end for Q&A. So without further ado, Daryl Salmi. All right. Awesome. Thanks for the introduction, Will. Um, and it's it's an honor to be here with, uh, with Heart Sounds and all of you today uh, to share some of the things that I've been able to do and learn as I've uh, gone through my journey so far with Heart Zones. Um, there sure is an awful lot to Heart Zones. Um, oftentimes when I'm talking to people, I I sometimes, I should say oftentimes, equate it to my iPhone. There's a lot of things on my iPhone. Um, and when I first got that iPhone, that, or a smartphone in general, I guess, but um, I thought, gosh, there's so many things I don't even know what to do and really didn't know where to start. So I think the first thing I probably did is sent a text or made a call, you know, so I just had to start somewhere. And that's what I love about Heart Zones. There's just so many features and so many opportunities to scaffold the learning um, that it makes it a lot easier to teach with over time because I can build lessons on top of lessons and, and obviously therefore the scaffolding. So I'm very thankful for that. And I would imagine that many of us uh, are in different places in our journey with Heart Zones, uh, teaching with Heart Zones. So um, certainly jump in at any time if you have any questions or comments. Um, if I touch on something you need more information, let me know. Um, if you'd like me to go a little further in depth, let me know that as well. Uh, I just want to kind of meet you where you're at and hopefully be able to share some, some ideas or even trigger some ideas uh, for yourself that you'll be able to bring to your classes as well. Um, I'm going to start out now, too. I have a question, Will. Um, the thing I didn't try when we got set up is how to advance my slides. So if you should click on that window and tap the, the right arrow, it should should go automatically for you, possibly the space bar. OK. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Or, or just clicking right on it, maybe, with their actual uh, mouse there. Hmm. OK. <laughs> This it one's on not me, everybody, advancing. for not, uh, not testing it out before. Uh, are you on the actual window of that presentation? Or are you back here in the I'm, uh, I'm in Meet? the webinar, yeah, in the yeah. Google Meet. Click on the, the tab with the actual presentation on it. OK, one second here. You might lose our pictures of us, but I'll, I'll make sure you get any questions. OK. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Navigate. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> While we're waiting, uh, if anyone wants to tell us how long they've been using Heart Zones in the chat box here, get the conversation started a little bit. So, Will, how about you sharing a little bit about what's going on? What's going on in the company? <laughs> uh, we are very excited about what's been uh, happening recently with Heart Zones. Uh, as most of you probably know, we launched our new app version upgrade that came along with our brand new cloud portal, uh, Heart Zones Connect. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of that today. If you have any specific questions on that stuff, um, save it to the end or feel free to shoot me an email at will.taylor at heartzones.com. And uh, we're constantly looking to improve our Heart Zones Move solutions with tech like that. And it looks like Daryl's got it. And I'll let him take yeah. the mic back. Yep. 
Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It was hidden in the background. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so at this point, uh, Will, just let me know if there's questions uh, or anyone out there. You can chime in at any time. I won't be offended at all. As um, at this point, that's all I can see is my presentation. So I might try to go um, back and forth as best I can here. I'll see if I can maneuver a little bit now that I know where that's at. So, okay. <clears throat> yeah. um, back to the big board here. The big board, this is where it all kind of starts. Um, it's the big board. It's where we can get all the information. Our students can see this real time. Um, so I always start with the big board um, on day one, and I just introduce to the students what that is, okay? And that's day one when I'm using the whole system. I'm going to backtrack a little bit as when I look at the Rhythm 24s up here, my first two days, and I teach high school PE, and I did it in the middle school as well, is I just spent the first two days having them wear their watches because I want them to understand how the watch works like how do i how do i get my watch how do i put my watch on um what do these colors mean on my watch so i want them to know that i want them to experience that and i want to give myself the chance to experience that with them because in the background i do have my ipad going so i can see the big board and and play with the data and, and make sure things are working the way i want them to so that when I present this big board, when I project it in my gym or whatever space I'm in, um, I'm ready for them to see that because I know there's going to be a lot of excitement and questions, uh, which is exactly what I want. I want students to be excited and have a lot of questions about fitness and health. Um, and Heart Zones helps to drive that for me. So um, I start out with the watches. I do a couple of days. Um, you know, it's kind of depending on, on the individual teacher, really. Some might want to wear them a little longer, giving themselves a chance to play with the with the app in the back route and getting things set up. So uh, that's my process to get started. And then I get into that big board, like I said. And as you can see on the slide, there's so much information, um, you know, because it's scaffolded. So there's numerous tiles and we'll get into that as we get into the presentation a little bit here. But I'm getting accurate um, and immediate feedback for myself and my students. Um, I'm able to assess and evaluate my lessons. I can evaluate and assess my students' engagement and intensity levels. Um, and they can do the same as we go through this process. Um, and of course, we can analyze our effort. Um, I can analyze it individually. I can analyze it as a class. And I'll get into some of the slides too. And it's fun. I mean, again, <laughs> that's, that's the big piece. I mean, are, are kids interested? You know, and if they're interested, um, can I teach with it? Uh, and that's the big thing is I want to teach PE with the support of technology and Heart Zones has given me that opportunity. Um, I have had technologies in the past where I felt like I spent more time trying to teach the technology than actually teach the class. So um, it's something that for me, I just was, when I was looking and, and hoping to find a solution, um, I wanted something that was going to be easy. I didn't want multiple buttons or a chest strap or anything like that. Um, and Heart Zones had that, has that solution. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. Um, one moment here, I'll advance. Um, so we're here on a Heart Zones threshold zones chart. And what I'll do with this oftentimes is I'll kind of, once I go through the big board, I'll use this to in, start introducing the, the the different zones, you know, with the low, easy, cool, blue zone. And I'll get into some of the information about that. Basically, I just say, hey, this is, you know, an easy, um, easy effort level. Um, most people are going to be very comfortable in this level. And there is a place for the blue zone. There's a place for all the zones. And we'll get into that as well. Uh, and we can move into the green where it's a little higher effort, but still in that easy zone. Um, and I'll go through the zone descriptions with the students. You can see those in here, um, kind of the talk tests and things like that and how you might feel as you go through this. And what I like about this is because often students might see something like this. Teachers can prepare this, share this, um, maybe using a heart zones card or something else you find on the internet. 
but now I can take this information that I share with them in a presentation or, or verbally or both. But now as we're wearing the sensors and we're going through a lesson, um, I can see what that feels like and I can connect it to the technology on the big board. So I think the value there is just a greater depth of learning. I can internalize that more where I'm seeing something, I'm feeling something and I'm hearing something. And as we know, as teachers, it's really important to hit on a lot of the senses if we, if we truly wanna engage at a deeper level with a, a lot of our students with some information. So again, I go from the watches, I go to the big board, I'll hit the threshold, uh, I, I should say the zones chart here for me to introduce the zones a little bit. There's a lot of information on this card, which is another great thing. I use a lot of um, information that Heart Zones does uh, have available and provide um, to help with my lessons. Because um, at first I wasn't using them as much, to be honest with you, but then I realized well, if I'm going back to remind myself or to learn a little better how I want to do this, um, maybe it's something I need to put right in my lesson. Maybe the students need to see this too. Um, I want them to have a lot of resources I have because uh, it's important. So a lot of the resources I get from Heart Zones, I share right with my students. And, and I'll do this. Um, I don't know what your setting might be, but I'll make some short presentations and um, you know, for my lessons and uh, just present it right up there so that they can see it. Uh, and then of course, they're gonna go from seeing this and going to view the big board um, after we move on from this and get into our um, activities and movements. And now they're gonna feel it. So um, I'm gonna get into some nutrition. You can see on here calories and things like that too. One of the things, when I first started using Heart Zones, one of the things I, I um, often did is I used it to measure activity and um, which is great. Um, I'd measure activity, um, but uh, I wanted to do more than that. I wanted to not just have heart zones on the wall, on the big board and after five or six or seven lessons. Um, kids are still looking at it, they're still engaging, but I don't feel like I'm utilizing it to its full capacity. So I started to think about how can, how can I use what Heart Zones has, has given me um, through technology uh, in different ways, you know? And, and I thought about nutrition and some things like that um, rather than just looking at intensity and heart rate. So, and I'll continue to get in that as we go. Uh, any questions at all so far? Yeah, Daryl, I have a question. <laughs> okay. So you've been using Heart Zones for a long time now. Uh, what's your? Do you have any general rules of thumb philosophies on on time and zone spent during a lesson? You know, depending on which type of class you're teaching that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good co question. Um, well, to your point, it really depends on the type of activities we're doing. In PE, a lot of times we're using a variety of different spaces and different teaching different um, activities. Uh, depends on the point um, of your unit you're in. Um, but so if I'm in the weight room, for example, with my high school PE class, it's going to be different. For me, what I often do in there is I'll use MVPA. So at the Perfect. end of our session, I'm hoping that their MVPA starburst is lit. Um, and if it is, they've met the goal. Okay. That's a little easier goal to meet because MVPA, moderate to vigorous physical activity, um, as our national standards would recommend, we should have 50% of all of our classes achieve MVPA. So 50% of a, for easy math, one hour class should be, uh, I should have 30 minutes of a moderate to vigorous physical activity. So I'll use that and I'll get into more detail on that in a little bit. Um, if I'm in the gym, let's say um, we're on day four or five of, um, let's see, we we're recently playing team handball and badminton. Okay, so there's two different things going on there. When we were doing the team handball, 
um, there's an opportunity for much more of a um, cardio event, if you will. So in there, I'm gonna, we're gonna set goals. Um, we do it two ways. I might set a class goal or I might ask them to set individual goals. It really depends on where we're at in the, in the semester in that early on I'll set them um, because I know that like the moderate level of intensity as per the CDC, they would say it's a it's a, the equivalent equivalency of a brisk walk, and that starts near the middle to top of the green zone. Okay, so I know that okay, if they're going to average, you know, the high green to yellow zone workout, um, you know, if I'm going again thirty minutes, I would want them to get on the low end eighty points. Um, and and I'd really enjoy to see most of them get into the ninety to a hundred zone in that thirty minutes. So and that would be a yellow zone workout um, primarily. So and they know it too. And I'll use this as a good transition into this first slide actually, because um, we have heart rate on tile one. There's actually multiple tiles, and when you open up your iPad and and heart, open up heart zones and start a class you'll see that you the first tile is will have a student name on there you can change that so when i plug in my ipad and i'm um projecting it it'll just st show the student number so it might be anything from one to 40 depending on how big your class might be okay so just the student number one rather than joe g I can see on my iPad, it's Joe G. So it's nice for my teacher view. Um, and we have our heart rate here, time in zones at the bottom with these little bar graphs. So we can see that. And now I'm gonna teach students about the fit point stars. Now, having gone through moderate to vigorous um, with you just now, uh, that's a lesson I do too. That's one of my first lessons with movement um is i want to teach what moderate feels like and i want to give the definition so i have some games you might have some great games already yourself but one of the games i call uh, i share is um i call it the walking game and really the walking game is just partner tag but i have a rule you can only walk and what that's going to give me is a good opportunity to to help them know what um, a brisk walk is going to feel like over a minute or two um, and through multiple rounds of partner tag playing the walking game. So you just have a couple of kids uh, throughout the class. Obviously you partner everyone up and one partner is partner one, partner two gives chase after four seconds and the rule is you can only walk. And we'll talk about what walking means and things like that as well. So within this lesson, we're, we're really kind of analyzing a movement and coming up with ideas of how to define what it means to walk and come into an agreement on what that is, um, depending on the age group that can look a variety of ways. And then I'll have them walk and play this game for a couple of minutes and they'll get done. And when they're done, they're breathing heavy. They feel it. They can see on the big board that many of them, uh, quite honestly, some of them get up into yellow um the high end even low orange sometimes but i share with them because the majority of the board will be in that high green low yellow and like that that this is that moderate that i that i want you to know about you know this is this moderate level of intensity you can see it there and right now if you take a moment to think about how you're feeling you can feel it too this is what moderate means and there's some health benefits to this high green low yellow moderate zone in that um as per the cdc again i mean a moderate brit is a brisk walk all right and and that's that's the recommendation quite honestly like uh, let's let's see if we can anything is better than nothing let's see if we can get at least to that so now they can again see it and feel it um and they're hearing about what it is and these fit stars over time so if i have a 30 minute recording within my class of activity time at the end of the 30 minutes, there would be five stars lit up here. So then at the end of the class, when I look at my, my, my iPad and I can see everything on there, I know right away which kids got there and which kids didn't. And when they look at the big board, they too know whether they achieved that goal. 
Now, once they do that, um, you know, we'll get to a point in in the week where we're going to start talking about how did that feel when you achieved those five stars? Did it give you a sense of accomplishment? Did you feel good? Um, maybe you were a little bit indifferent. You could have a variety of feelings and none of, none of them will be wrong. But I want you to identify how you're feeling and how that made you feel when you achieved that. It might be an easier goal for some, so it's not really that big of a deal. For some, they feel accomplished. And that makes me feel good. And you know, that really drives a feeling in PE as well. Because quite honestly, for me, my ultimate goal is when my kids, when I meet them at the beginning of the semester, um, I hope that at the end of the semester, whatever their relationship was at the beginning with physical activity, their relationship is even stronger by the end of the semester. Um, it's not always easy to get there either. I mean, it's challenging sometimes for a variety of reasons because there's a lot of things we don't control, but there's an awful lot we do. And, and through a lot of what I'm doing with heart zones, quite honestly, I'm able to get there in a variety of ways. I mean, I think, I think a majority, a, a fair amount of my students would say, that they felt very important in my class. And uh, I think a lot would have a, say they grew with their relationship with movement and physical activity. So the fit stars on, on, on tile one, along with heart rate, time and zones. So there's three bigger pieces of information that I'll use with my students here. Hey, Daryl, we have a quick question from Helen. Uh, she's okay. wondering why you decided to use five colors in threshold. Uh, versus three in zoning. Is that because oh. you're teaching high school or because you want to do a little bit more instructing on what the different yeah. heart zones mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> I always kind of, I call, I don't know if it's the right thing or not, but I always call them the in-between zones, the green and the orange. Um, I just, I don't know, I've just always done it that way. I didn't have a real strong reason as to why or why not when I initially did it and I become became more comfortable with it. And I know that moderate starts kind of in that higher half of the green zone. So as I think about my moderate level of intensity, I kind of want to share that with the students. So that's one of the reasons, it wasn't the reason I started to, but it's one of the reasons I continue to uh, go with the five zones. Um, some is as well. Now I teach a weight training class a lot and three days a week, we're in a weight room and two days a week, we're in the gym. And, um, that green zone is really important in, in weight training, you know, depending on the kind of workout you're doing too. So it really depends on what my focus might be on the lesson and what my activity might be, um, to simplify really, um, as a newer person using it. Um, it'd be very easy to start with three zones. You know, there's a little less information to cover. Um, so I guess that would probably a rec be a recommendation I'd make is start with three if you like it, stay with it for a while and, and, and move on to the five zones. But yeah, I guess that's the backstory. Cool. And I really like that emotional connection you're trying to get to fitness. That head-heart connection is really important. So that's cool that you ask them kind of after the yeah. lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes time. I mean, kids will think about that. Um, there's a time in my career where, well, I'll ask, but I didn't know if they'll really think about it. Um, but I think, you know, I think we've evolved as physical educators and um, we're, we're, we found a lot of ways to really connect with our stu students in meaningful ways. So um, I don't know. I think I've, they've found it to be very beneficial and so have I. Uh, at the end of the semester, I'll give a little exit survey, as many probably do. And um, it's very cool to see a lot of the comments that the kids will leave. Um, you know, just that they had never thought of one thing or another, perhaps, um, in a PE class or in their terms, a gym class. <laughs> um, but yeah, they start to really connect that. So. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, the blue green zone too, as I think about that question a little more too. Um, if anyone does any mindfulness or yoga, um, it's a great way to use those zones too. 
and to teach those and and uh, connecting with your feelings and things like that um uh so you can go through the zones and and connect on a lot of levels that way too so a lot of different ways you could use that um slide two um a summary data slide here um fit points um many of you are probably that are using this already are probably familiar with this i think the fit points is a pretty popular feature um and it is for me too because i can adjust the goal as i said earlier in the weight room i'll use this starburst and once they get to 50 percent of the time so this is just a quick snap for this uh presentation but at two minutes and seven seconds joe had been at 66 percent mvpa so 66 percent of that time um he was in a moderate to vigorous level of physical activity so that's wonderful over the next 30 minutes we'll see where he's at if he's at 50 percent or higher he's achieved that goal in our weight room and in a weight room it, you got to think about what kind of workouts you're doing of course too i mean i'm doing a lot of supersets and things like that so um mvpa should certainly be very doable um if i'm doing more of an olympic style uh, where there's going to be a lot more of a rest and recovery phase in between each set um that 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 will look different i might go back to a lower level fit point goal at that point but with the fit points again for there's five zones or three depending on how you want to use it so let's go with the example of three a blue yellow and a red the blue zone is worth one point for every minute you're in it the yellow zone is worth three points for every minute you're in it. And when you get into the red, it's worth five. Okay, so it's one, three, and five using the three zones. Um, if we're going to go 30 minutes and I want a yellow workout, uh, a strong, moderate level workout, so 30 times three points per minute in the yellow zone, so 30 times three is 90 points. So at the end of the class, again, you'll see on your iPad, on which students and i'll just take a quick snapshot of my ipad a screenshot and then i can see which kids got it didn't get it um and this is another thing where sometimes i'll set class goals and sometimes we start making smart goals using these so we'll introduce that process of uh setting very specific goals for a unit or each day or um, depending on the activities um you know i've over time seen and heard a lot and everyone's trying to do their best but i i at one point saw somebody say there was a, a goal of 90 fit points playing table tennis I was like oh goodness um that's gonna be really hard to get so um you know i guess my point is we got to be just a little bit cognizant of our growth as teachers and do our best to ask questions and being here obviously with each other it helps as we can share ideas and collaborate and um learn how to best use this with our students so a lot of ideas that we'll be able to share but um table tennis is just not a great cardio event to have a 90 a goal of 90 fit points so there might be other things i want to do with that and that uh maybe i'm going to measure some uh maybe i want them depending on the grade level too is like hey we're going to play uh table tennis and um i want you to put your best guess on this uh do you think you'll at the end be be in a, a yellow zone a i'd probably use a five zone green zone or blue zone you know where do you think it's going to be playing table tennis and, and you know if you got a few kids that can play really play they're going to get their heart rate up there a little bit even table tennis but most will be a lower level and we can talk to those zones too so there's a lot of ways to connect with the zones through activity um and what some of those things mean so again the starburst that's measuring mvpa it's wonderful um, if we have, um, it could be a part of your, your goals. So our annual teacher growth goals is maybe I want 80% um, of my students will be at or above MVPA as recorded through Heart Zones um, X amount of times throughout the semester or however you might want to, I'm just kind of making that up real quick on the fly, but your annual goals, this is great because now I'm using data to measure those goals. For us in our district, I mean, if, if, if we achieve our goal, there's a money value tied to that too. So I want to meet that goal. I'm 
I'm not going to retire early or anything, but it's 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 nice to do. Okay, so there are ways you can set those goals um, that you'll be successful with, but they'll be meaningful goals and they'll be tied to technology and learning. So that's one idea for anyone looking for any goals or ways to tie it to your goals. Um, moving on to the next slide. This one I won't spend as much time on. Sometimes I'll use this line graph though um, in, my, in, in my weight training class or there might be some units you might use them differently where maybe I'm not doing supersets, but I can see the spike and the recovery in a spike and a recovery and a spike and recovery. And see, I just did three sets there. I dropped down, maybe I was walking in here down and I spike, spike, spike there, got it. And then I went into more of a cardio mode. So I was doing a lift, three lifts or two sets of three of two different lifts. And then I went into a cardio jump roping mode or something like that. Maybe not jump roping. I think it would have been a little higher, but I could see easily what's going on. And, and quite honestly, there might be more peaks and valleys if um, I was doing all the sets in the weight room. And I wouldn't want to see this too long of a break. So now the kids can see that too. So there's some accountability there. So for this tile, that's one of the ways I use it. Depending at your level and your and where you're at, uh, that might be helpful for you as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse oh, me. Hey, Daryl, we got a quick question. Yeah. From Jennifer, great question. Uh, she would like to know how you incorporate SEL or social social and emotional learning into your heart zones uh, teachings. Okay. Are you working on that at all? I am. Um, yes, and some of that I'll do as we go. Okay. Okay. So when I was talking about earlier, I should have emphasized this a little more. I'm sorry. Very good question. Um, <clears throat> that whole connecting the feeling, like what does you know moderate feel like to you? What? How did you feel after achieving that goal of th uh, three stars? So then later on, we're setting goals with fit um, points, and now having achieved that goal, or maybe I achieve that goal every day of this week. At the end of the week, it might be, how did you achieve your goal? How many times did you achieve your goal this week? And they write that down. And then how do you feel about achieving that goal? And they're going to share those thoughts. And it won't take long. It takes like three to four minutes to write that down. I've since gone from a writing to a Google form. Um, almost all of our kids have a phone in their bag or whatever. So I have them fill that out at the end of class on Google form because it's just easier for me to manage now. Uh, but I have a form and I will try to dig that out of my, I don't have that on this presentation for some reason, but I will dig that out at the end, um, and get that on here yeah, because be I have a daily a one too. Yeah. It's a I like the form a lot. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll get it after and we'll send it out. That's a great idea to okay. kind of have an emotional check-in or check out, yeah. I guess. That's a good idea. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do it. It's connected to their movement and heart zones. And I'll give you all a hard copy of that. Adjust, mod, make a copy, adjust, modify, do whatever you want with it if you want to do anything with it. Um, but that way they're connecting to uh, feelings. And I'll get to that. I'll jump ahead a little bit here in that... It's actually one of the things I'm working on. Um, a little further. So my teacher goal. Um, oops, sorry. My teacher goal for this year, after having students participate in a moderate to vigorous level of intensity workout or activity with a heart rate at 70% or higher, 70% or higher is basically the yellow zone or higher for 50% or more of the class, i.e. MVPA, I will have students complete a survey to reflect on how they are feeling, their energy level and their productivity throughout the day. It is hoped that students will feel more positive on the measures over 50% of the time. We will use this survey a minimum of six times over two months. So, this is my goal. I want to 
one, I want my kids to connect their, their feelings, their thoughts, uh, their emotion, if you will, to um, our activities. And I want them to use the Heart Zones technology to measure that. And I want to get to that 70% or higher um, and see how they're feeling. So how did you feel when you came in the class? Did you have good energy? Were you feeling um, like you were in a good mood and in a positive place? Um, and <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and we'll go through, a, there's five questions on it. And they'll just fill it out quickly and we'll get that done. And I'm collecting data and they'll have that same data for their reference. Um, and now it's given them a chance to, to connect that um, mind and body experience, if you will, through heart zones. So, and I picked 70% because I knew that was in a moderate level of intensity. Um, and I know that most people, when they finish that, that workout, that's at, at least in that moderate level or higher, generally the endorphins and things like that are, have kicked in. Um, and I want to make sure we connect that together um, as a teacher and student. That's cool. That's a very practical way to uh, show a kind of a hard concept in social emotional learning. So I like yeah, that. If it really was. Uh, if anyone's yeah. never used a Google form, it collects the data in a nice, easy to read spreadsheet for you too. So you could save it throughout the semester. So we'll get that out after. Thanks, Daryl. Yeah, anytime. Thanks for the question. Um, I'm going to move forward a little okay here we go um okay i'm going to go into a little bit about how i use this with with nutrition okay um <clears throat> and i'll share this zoning card again um with my classes on a presentation and um you know i'm going to start getting into the fuel that you you burned primarily in a zone you'll always burn um fat and carbohydrates regardless of the zone but in some zones you'll burn more than another okay so within this when i get into a really vigorous level of intensity i'm going to burn a lot more carbs because carbs um you don't need oxygen okay and and so you're going to be in that high level anaerobic type mode and you're going to get quick energy um, and that energy is supplied from one of three energy systems. I, I'll touch on that just a little bit with kids so they know there are three different energy systems. And they'll know that two of the three require oxygen and one does not. I'm at the high school level. So that's about the depth I'll go with that. I'll, I'll, I'll go a little deeper with them, but not in my expectation of their learning. Okay, but I want them to know, because uh, I'm going to teach a lesson on macronutrients and carbs and fats are micronutrients, protein is the other. So <clears throat> once we move into the yellow zone, now, you know, it's gonna be roughly 50-50, if you will. Uh, a lot of literature I've read from Sally and others um, would say that it's a, a little different. It's like 45%, um, but you know, for the simplicity of my class, I'm like, you're basically burning half the time you're burning carbs, half the time you're burning fats. When I get in that cool blue zone, well now, or even that green in between for those using five zones, um, now you, I know that, okay, a lot of this I'm gonna be burning more fats, okay? Because I'm not that super high intensity um, anaerobic mode, I'm more of an aerobic lower level where I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn more fat, okay? And it takes time to burn fat, there's more, there's nine calories per gram versus four calories per gram in, in the carbs. So we'll go through that a little bit too and talk about the difference um, in terms of energy. There's more energy in fat, okay? I can use it for a longer time because um, I'm not gonna get as tired as quickly either, okay? And of course there's more energy for that fuel. So um, just quick two questions I put in here. Which zone do you think will burn the most calories? over a one hour workout, uh, one hour cardio workout, workout cardio, sorry, little typo there on my part. Um, but which zone do you think will burn the most calories over one hour workout, cardio workout? Um, and I'll let the kids uh, turn and talk, things like that. 
we'll we'll share out and share those ideas. Um, does anyone have a guess here or care to guess? I'm certainly willing to let you if you'd like to. Um, I'll let the kids know that um, there's just maybe not quite enough data to share an exact um, because I don't know enough pers about the person. So let's say person A is in really good shape. They do a lot of endurance, cardio endurance work. Um, they're going to be really good in these middle zones and they're going to spend some time in the red too and they're going to be comfortable doing it over time so over one hour that's a lot of time um whereas for others it's like gosh i'm i'm not person number two is not in that situation where they don't do that maybe they're doing a lot of brisk walks things like that which is wonderful but getting up into that red zone is not ideal for them they don't feel uh <laughs> real good when they're in that zone so rather than feel awful in the red zone let's lower the expectation and gain the health benefits so in the end what i'm trying to say is um you know if you're not comfortable in red but you can stay in the uh, you know uh blue yellow a lot longer you're gonna you could potentially uh, burn more calories there energy if you will um in that because you can stay in it for a lot longer over time if you're an endurance person and you're comfortable in the red and you're super comfortable in that middle of zone um, where you're going to be able to stay in that for a long time, you're ultimately going to burn more calories there. You know, you're going to burn more calories in a red zone than you will the blue. But if I can't stay in the red zone, I'm not going to burn a lot of calories there. So it's okay again to get back down into that yellow zone, green zone, if you're using the in-between zones. So I'll get the conversation started with some of these concepts and then I'll do it with weight training as well um, and how that might look. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to keep moving a little bit. Uh, on the nutrition essential question, macronutrients, when we work out in the red zone, uh, vigorous high intensity, which macronutrients is a primary source of energy? So that's going to be important for them to know at the end of the class. Um, through an exit slip to a slip of some sort, perhaps I'm gonna have them answer this and I'll know right away. Do they know what I need them to know? And if not, what, what how am I gonna approach it? Well, maybe I need to go deeper into that. If it's just a few kids, I can connect with those kids as we go, make sure they understand that concept. So um, from here, I'd show them this slide, fueling the zones with carbohydrates you know and now i'm just going to share what that is you know and i'll t get back into um hey when we are active today let's check on these zones when we're you when you get up in that red zone you know you're burning a lot of um carbohydrates quick energy and these are the foods that you want to definitely get going so when you're in that orange or red zone if you're using five zones these are the foods i'm thinking about all right and this is how i'm going to feel those zones and not all carbs are the same. And I'll go into that lesson real quick about that as well. And I'll do the same for um, fats as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we work out in the blue and yellow zones, uh, we will begin to use more fat for energy. Not all fats and healthy fat. Uh, not all fats are healthy and anyone can share the name of an unhealthy fat. So I just get into this lesson um, in there, and then we get in, and then I tie it to heart zones again, like, okay, the last several days you've, you know, been in these zones, we've been learning about these zones. Well, now when you're in that green zone today, we're playing badminton, and many of you are going to be in a green or yellow zone. Um, how, what foods are you going to eat to fuel that zone? And we'll have a conversation about those healthy foods that we can use to fuel that zone. As you can see in this slide right here, I'll just put this right up there for them. And we'll discuss that. So now I'm fueling the zones and I'm connecting all this information I'm using with heart zones to other types of lessons, not just fre frequency intent, not just the intensity of my workout or my activity that day, if you will. So that's how I've started using it to help to connect the dots with um, nutrition. So the web portal um, is relatively new. Um, well, it's new for me. I started using it this year. Um, 
And to me, this is another game changer that Heart Zones has has shared, and, and I'm very thankful for it uh, because it gives me an opportunity to go online, um, get on the internet, um, tie into the portal, sign into the portal, and I can go to my classes, and it'll list my classes. Um, can you can you guys see the data on this? All right, it's really small on my screen. I want to make sure that I'm, you can see what I'm speaking to. It's a little small, but okay. Yeah. All right, in this first box, I'll just real quick. It says MVPA for the session, so fifty one percent. So my class hit fifty one percent MVPA. All right, I think that's wonderful, and that's what I said my goal was in the weight room um, that we we'd hit MVPA and get that starburst lit. So I'm like, okay, great. The average MVPA was 51%. The time was uh, 1729 and uh, um, heart rate fit points was at 87. And I can see calories there if I'm doing anything with less. And uh, I never use calories in a negative sense in terms of setting calorie limits or anything like that. For me, I want them to learn that calories are important. They, they, they um, fuel the zones, they fuel the body. Um, and where do we choose to get those calories? And, and, and I might talk about, um, you know, a proportion a little bit and things like that. But uh, certainly, I, I always try to keep calories as a positive because they are, we need them for energy. And we need them from a variety of, of resources. All the macros are important is basically what I teach them. But back to the web portal. So here's a quick snapshot I can see. You can see heart rate, steps, things like that. These sessions, if I were to click on these, one, two, these are just each of the recordings I made. And you can see the dates. Um, with this classic, I'd have to continue on to the next page to show you the most recent, uh, which would have been before the holiday season. Um, but I can see the total fit points, MVPA, and all those as a quick snap as well. So the web portal is awesome to get that data over time. And it allows me to utilize it that way. Um, here's a little closer. If I clicked on an individual class, I covered up the names there. Um, this is from November 21st, class time 857, duration fit points and I can go through here and see that if I had a fit goal or if maybe I was having MVPA. I always like to share this too. Um, for me, it's really important like this student had 10 and this student had 28. So they're a lot lower than most of these. Um, and a lot of times it's a matter of really knowing my students as well. Like this student just got back from being sick. And this student is on a game day and in two hours, they're gonna drop the puck for a hockey game. So they did exactly what I hoped they would do. They got a really good warm up and started really firing those neurons before their athletic event. So now they're gonna to be totally ready for that event. Um, that's great learning for my students and, and myself too. Uh, they know I care. They know I'm gonna tailor their activity or their workouts to their needs as best I can. You don't know, they know it's a two way street. So this data is um, very helpful over time too. Now, if it was 28 all the time, you know, we have some other things that we need to talk about, you know, and again, I don't want to ruin the activity or the movement or the experience. So heart zones and this data is giving me a chance to talk to them. You know, I can visit with them and say, hey, over the last eight or nine sessions, um, you're, you're, not at a level that that I think you could be if you were willing to commit a little more, but you know maybe there's a reason you can't commit more, um, and I just don't know it. So let's have that conversation. And most of the time when I say something like that, like yeah, I, you know I can, you know, and I and I guess I will. You know they're not always super excited. And some, guess what? They're going to tell me no every time. So we got to work through that. And that's that's going to be the long haul for that student and me. And we'll have to figure out, hopefully, by the end of the semester, how to, to improve that. Most will over time. There's very few that just absolutely won't do anything. But some are there. And there's a variety of reasons for it. So that's another engaging experience, though. Um, back to the SEL question. That is SEL. 
those moments that I talk about data that I collect through heart zones, um, that's meaningful interaction with, with the teacher um, because I care. So if I can present it in a way that I care, and I'm hopeful that we can um, improve our commitment, um, they're going to be open to that. And they know that they're important to me. Um, whether they're a kindergartner or a senior in high school, they want to know that for sure. Um, so, and sometimes it's hard. There's moments when, you know, perhaps they're saying or doing things that we don't like. <laughs> So I, I'm not perfect either. That's sometimes really hard, uh, but it's something I've personally tried to um, grow in over time. So a little bit about some of the info in the portal. Uh, you can get this screen too. And you can see here, I could click on here and I can send this to the participant or uh, my student or to their parents or both. I can put emails in for parents and or students if you want to do that. Hey, so the, yeah. We had a question about that, actually. Um, how often do you usually send out reports to the students or the parents? Do you do it all the time, or do you do it after viewing it yourself for a while and, and finding the right reports to send a lesson, or how do you handle yeah. it? Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I think the best way to do that um, is a little bit driven by learning activities and units again. Um, I don't think parents necessarily want to get that email every day. <laughs> um, but they do like to get them like, hey, here's a snapshot of um, Catherine's activity today. Uh, we're involved in um, whatever it might have been. So I can just kind of get that little intro email made and fire that out. So we do it through um, Google and it's super easy to just make a template email introducing it and then uh, getting this out. So, you know, once a unit, for my kids um, at the high school, some want it more often. Some never look at it unless I have an online assignment asking them to go under Schoology and they'll say, hey, take yesterday's report and um, let me know how many fit points you got and what your activity was and how you feel about that. It could be as simple as that to get them to engage. I like that. And then we had another question uh, kind of relating back to the calories and the, the macronutrients. Yeah. In hard zones move, do you typically enter in the student's age, height, and weight to get a little more accurate calorie, or do you find it's pretty good for your lessons if you don't even do that? How do you, yeah. how do you handle those? <laughs> good question. Uh, a little bit of personal preference. I don't necessarily put that in because the information I'm getting to teach the concepts I'm teaching about calories um, is certainly accurate enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and it's pretty close, generally speaking. Uh, so, no, I don't spend the time to do that. Yeah, I'd say most of our teachers don't uh, put that yeah. level of if, information in. No. Yeah, I mean, depending on what my training was. So, like, I'll. I train, I coach football and I do some training as well outside of school, after school. You know, there might be some ways I do that. Um, you know, sometimes, so I'll, and through, I don't know how many people have community education in their, in their state or their district. We have community education. It's just, it might be called something else where you live, but um, sometimes I teach adult boot camp for our classes. And the parents love when I bring these and they wear them for the, uh, eight or, or what is 10 sessions we do together. Um, and I'll teach them a little bit about zoning and things like that. So now their parents are getting a sense of what their kids are doing too. Um, but they're able to learn this. And I might put that data in for the parents if they want it to be that way. Yeah. Um, they generally don't either, but I also, I didn't want to forget it made me think of that. Um, some of the parents, so that's a good way to, um, I've kind of leveraged heart zones to connect with my parents a little bit where it's super easy to lead a fitness class of some sort with community ed. Community ed loves it. And um, I enjoy connecting with my, with my parents throughout my district doing that fitness class with them. So that's great. Uh, Good questions, everybody. There. Yeah. Keep them coming. So student report. Um, is right here uh, again the date and everything and that might have been the slide we we're just on 
uh, maybe not. Average heart rate, um, peak heart rate, minimum heart rate, MVPA was at 88%. Um, MVPA time, fit points was uh, 110. So that gives me a snapshot here of um, where the student is uh, for this class, that session. Um, so uh, how Heart Zones has changed my teaching, um, I think student engagement and teacher engagement has um, increased and it's developed in more meaningful ways. Um, Heart Zones has also helped me to personalize the learning and, and really connect to students, you know, where they're at, um, which I think is really important because um, it's not necessarily one size fits all. Um, people are in different places with their relationship with um, physical activity um, and with heart zones and, and through my teaching uh, and building relationships with students. Um, I'm going to meet them at where they're at um, and not expect more than I should of them. And I wouldn't want them to um, put them in a situation where they're working so hard, they're just not comfortable anymore. And now it's not a good situation. It's not a fun class. Um, they're not excited to be there. Um, and they're, they become disinterested in, and lethargic oftentimes, I think. So that's been important. Um, obviously, relationship goes with that. As I have here, I'm not perceived as a judge and jury. So if I'm using this for my my assessment, one assessment piece of it, um, activity engagement or intensity, daily intensity and engagement, um, it's not because I wasn't looking at the right times or anything like that. Um, and they know that over time, I'm going to use the data over time. It's not because a couple days you just you didn't achieve the goal that you know, I was hopeful you'd be able to achieve or the goal that you set. Um, that's two days. I've, I've had two bad days in a row myself. Um, and we get to drive those conversations. So um, I think it's a really relevant way to assess and help determine grades. Um, and it's just one piece of assessment too. Um, curriculum decisions, assessments, things like that. I would just a little at the bottom, my students, 80% uh, of seventh grade students indicated they like using heart rate technology. Um, do you feel like it is good to have your effort assessed using your own heart rate data instead of teacher observation in the question? And 80% were in on that too. So um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool ways to use heart zones. Um, my growth, I try to grow a little bit with it each semester and each year. Um, sorry, I know I'm clicking in and out of that. Um, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have in this presentation. Um, but if there's any questions or any ways that you want to um, collaborate moving forward or anything like that, um, That'd be great. I'm I'm always excited to do that as well. We have another question uh, from Helen here. Do you ever have kids who have trouble getting into the MVPA zone, um, whether or not that's due to lack of effort or not? So, yeah, anyone getting you know even just to the threshold of collecting MVPA? Yeah, yeah. At fifty percent, um, some students do. Um. And again, this is uh, the craft of teaching, I, I like to say, um, in that now I need to make those decisions like, okay, so if the learning's not taking place in this sense, it's a little different than like a classroom learning. I'm, it's They're not able to achieve that goal of MVPA and I've got to determine why. So is it because they're disinterested? Is it because they have health a health issue that I'm not aware of? um is it they're just their fitness level is really at a low level you know and how i go about helping them to move forward um it's going to depend on what i can figure out there so depending on obviously the age of the child um or student um is going to depend on how i go about getting that information but there's some information i need to find for about 
that student so that we can move forward in, in achieving MVPA. If it's a fitness level thing, I can change the individual zones so I can lower the zones for that student so they can achieve MVPA. I can make the, you know, the challenge a little less daunting. Um, once you're using heart zones for a little while, um, you know, you, you can set individual zones as well, the thresholds. There's two thresholds, T1 and T2, um, and aerobic and anaerobic thresholds. Um, but you can set that so all the zones are set to that student. You know, there's some things you need to do with that in that if you're going to use that and it's just a it's just a button in the settings. Um, you can set it up. So if I know I'm doing some activities that the kids are going to be super excited about um, and I know that it's really going to raise the heart rate um, quite naturally for almost all of them, um, that might be a good day to set the zones. Um, there's a variety of ways to do that. You, you could do it doing some fitness testing as well. Um, I think there's funner ways to do it, but um, that's personal preference. That's actually my favorite part of our app is the automatic uh, zone setting feature for each individual. So yeah. that it's kind of a level playing field going forward. So if anyone has any questions on how to do that, shoot me an email. I love doing that lesson with everyone. Uh, we have yeah. someone brave who actually wants to ask a question out loud. Helen Plow, Okay. Yeah, please. of course it's Helen. Uh, Darryl, okay, I, Helen. Hi, when I ask that question, I'm looking at the other end, um, not the kid. I'm, I got a couple oh, yeah. really fit kids cool. that like in that 30 minute session, you know, if it's a short PE period that day that are having trouble getting up into that MVPA zone. And is it, is yeah. it, do I need gotcha. to? That's that's really what that question was in reference yeah. to, not not the okay. other end. Gotcha. Can you address so both, it? Both, yeah, I've seen both of those, and I see that too. Yeah, yeah, great, Helen. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, yeah, I don't know what level you're at. Um, middle school. Middle school. Okay. So, and I ask that because, you know, sometimes it's tough too. I, <laughs> I always say my PE classes are not my training classes so students or athletes that come see me after school we're training them okay if i'm a part of the training group um in pe we'll do some training we'll learn a lot about training concepts and we'll definitely get that moderate to vigorous each day um, but i know that a lot of kids even kids that enjoy movement don't necessarily want to, let's say in the middle of their day, work out at a really super high level of intensity and then have to go to class after, <laughs> if they even changed. <laughs> um, so there's some of that, um, but for those kids that are in really good shape, um, you know, you got your cross country runners, your Nordic skiers, your swimmers, your a variety of different kids that are in a lot of different athletics. Um, a lot of times in, in RPE classes, they're not necessarily going to get there because they've been training a lot um, through their sport. So what I do is, and I, as I have this discussion with them is, hey, I'm going to lower your zones a little bit. And quite honestly, the zones will set themselves up as they individually get set when I do that through the system. But if I need to toggle some, and some I do, like, had some elite cross country runners and things like that. And I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know what we're going to do in the next 30 minutes that it's going to get you where you need to be in this class. So it becomes a little bit unfair in a PE class to have that expectation. And I have that conversation and share that with them. And I adjust their zones lower. Got it. Yeah. yeah especially at that middle school age, a really good athlete is going to have such a high max heart rate, you know? Oh yeah. A 60% sure. of that is tough. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about that, like when I do my own workouts and think about my zones and how I'm feeling. And of course, I'm a little older than a high school or middle school kid. But, you know, when I think about, do, is this, could I do this day after day in a PE class um, during third hour? And sometimes the answer is like, well, <laughs> there's other things to PE. And that's, 
that's that's I don't want to use heart zone as a tool that um, they might not appreciate or enjoy using for the learning and the feedback. So I, I try to be careful with that as well. I'd rather err on the side of caution in my planning and expectation and then grow with it. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Yeah, hugely. I don't want them to get discouraged. I don't want yeah. that. And they're right now, a couple of them are a little bit frustrated. I can't get up there. I can't get up there. What? Yeah. And it's, yeah. I can tell them it's not you. It's your fitness level's really good. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Click in there, click in their tiles and individually adjust their, um, their zones. Just drop them down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I play with it a little bit. I'll go in yeah. with my students and I'll drop it. Um, you know, anywhere from five to eight beats per minute, each of the, the, yeah. the two thresholds. Yeah. Um, and that'll adjust each of the zones. And then the next day I just let them know, Hey, I've adjusted your zones a little bit and Let's see what happens. Uh, we'll it. monitor this yeah. together and make sure that you're getting the experience you need to have. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. And if you compare the, their average heart rate, you know, at least you have an option for them to to see their improvement and stuff there too. Uh, right. and Helen, yeah, if you want me to check their max heart rate with you, I'll I'll walk you through kind of my favorite ways to do that. Sounds good, Will. Thanks. Way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question for Daryl? Kind of went over our hour just a little bit here, um, but I think that was really really useful. Thank you, Daryl. Anything else so, you uh, yeah. you have for them on the way out here? Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, just a reminder, I don't know where everybody's at in their using experience, but uh, anytime we can collect uh, or get together and collaborate in any way, maybe it's through email or anything else, uh, certainly it helps because we can share our experiences and what has worked and maybe what hasn't. And people are going to come up with some really cool ideas and how to use this and being able to share that is very helpful. Um, but the key, if you're a little bit newer to this, um, start slow like i said i started with just wearing those watches and helping them understand how to get them on and what they mean and getting that data and it allows me in the background of the class to have it on without projecting it so i can utilize that data on my ipad and get used to functioning with that um and then it's really super easy i mean um i, I just think it's a system that's as meaningful and helpful and easy as I could have ever hoped for, quite honestly. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see where we go from here. Very nice to say. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Please let me know uh, if you need anything else. And we will be sending this recording out uh, with the presentation so you can use some of that as well. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great session. Thank you. Thank you.